this talk is about uh, work we've been doing at the Laboratory for Web Algorithmics in the last couple of years about studying centrality in general in large networks. And, um, okay, I I'll have to go through several different things in very different areas. So I will be unavoidably imprecise and sometimes even lying, but I hope to convey the message anyway. Uh, this is also the reason why there are basically no quotation, uh, not because there is no prior work or I didn't publish anything, but uh, uh, I'm going to skim quickly through so many uh, topics that it would be very difficult to, uh, I mean, the slides would be just mostly uh, quotation. So, okay, the question is, what do these people have in common? So I've put this question a lot of times in different contexts. So Ron Jeremy is a famous porn actor, in case you don't know, okay? Uh, Lloyd Kaufman is a cult uh, director, and uh, the lady Debbie Roshan is a cult uh, uh, actress that works with him, and probably you know the rest of the people. Or oh, if you ever played with the Hollywood uh, uh, co-starship graph, because you know, because these are the top actors by page rank. Okay, so now you're going, you have to go and explain George Clooney that uh, a porn star uh, following Google methodology, how the press would call it, uh, actually think that it is much more uh, important. If you never play with it, the Hollywood co-starship graph is the graph that has as node uh, the individuals in the internet movie database, and there is an undirected edge between two individuals, even only if they worked uh, in a movie, okay? So this is what you get if you try to compute page rank uh, on that graph. Okay, this slightly better, in particular if you're a Trekkie, Okay, okay. Uh, who knows who's best flowers? Raise your hand. Oh, so you never play with social networks. Okay, that's very important. Uh, so these are the top by degree. And the reason why you don't know best flowers is that if you play with the internet movie database, you know her because she has a Wikipedia page. She's the first person that in the 20th century, not knowingly, engineered their rank in a network. So, the lady was accepting any part in any movie, no matter how small, just for the sake of having the part. So she acted in like 700 movies. So she engineered the, her degree in the co-starship graph, but willingly. She w w probably, she would never have imagined she would end up in a scientific talk, but that was the purpose. So the lesson is degree is easily spammable. It's very easy to engineer your degree. Okay, what about this? Top actors. Okay, this starts to be not probably the best. I mean, Antonio Banderas, seventh best actor. Okay, maybe not, but at least we don't have complete crap inside the list. Okay. Now, uh, okay, in these days, you might have got the impression that the better thing you have to do if you have a very large graph and you want to understand something on the structure is to compute an eigenvector. And the purpose of this talk is don't don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, okay, that's a little bit too much. My suggestion is you should not only look at that. And before you ask me, I, I have quite a few papers on page rank uh, and spectral ranking. Actually, I wrote a survey on spectral ranking that rebuilds the history from the 50s in psychology up to now. Uh, but what I'm interested in now and I want to talk about is geometric centralities, which is actually the oldest form of centrality. You might have heard of closeness. If you never heard of closeness, let's talk about closeness. So this is Bavelas in 46 at MIT. Uh, it's probably the oldest reference to an explicit notion of centrality in a network. The idea is that you use the distance in a, in a graph, so the length of a shortest path from y to x, uh, which is that one. And then what you do is say, okay, I'm the node x, and I'm adding up the distances from all other nodes to me. If this number is very large, it means that a lot of nodes are very far from me. So I'm not central, I'm in some peripheral part of the network. So you can call the denominator peripherality of a node. And then you say, okay, I'm central if I'm not peripheral. And when, when you say, you want to say not in mathematics, you put a minus sign or you take the reciprocal. So the E decided to take the reciprocal, okay? So if you're very central to the network, very, a lot of nodes are very close to you, the denominator is small, this number is large, okay? Closeness centrality is the first item you find in the centrality page of Wikipedia. It's the mother of all centralities, okay? Uh, of course, uh, we are interested in modern networks. Uh, this guy, Bavelas, had the undirected connected networks. We want to have general networks, directed, not strongly connected. So uh, people have done for some time uh, the trick of adding up just on the 
uh, nodes for which the distance is finite, because otherwise you get zero. Okay? But this is not very smart, because what happens is that if you have isolated small components, uh, the summation at the denominator is small, not because you're central, but because you're not reachable by many nodes. So that offsets completely the centrality and makes very important part of the network, which are small isolated components, initial components. We rather suggest to compute this. I, I'm touching this button if I sh should, I shouldn't, so you will see appearing stuff in advance. But um, we just want to suggest, and we are interested in, and this is what I used for the previous slide, the harmonic centrality. So this is the same idea, exactly the same idea, but. Okay, look at the formula above. Okay, the laser pointer is like uh, this thing. Okay, so this is like an average denormalized without the end. Now, in your mind, replace arithmetic mean with harmonic mean, and you get here. Because here you get one over the summation, you reciprocate twice. So this is exactly the same exact idea of 70 years ago, but with the harmonic mean. And this is a good idea for a number of reasons. First of all, harmonic mean is very good at treating outliers, even infinity. You just get zero. Okay? And second, this actually comes from an idea that unfortunately is cut by the projector, but Marchione and Latora in 2000 published a paper in which they suggested instead of computing the average distance in a graph or the maximum distance in a graph to compute the harmonic mean of distances in a graph. Because then we can apply the procedure even to graphs that are not strongly connected. And this is the same idea applied to centrality. So we are going to talk about this uh, idea. So a slight layer of painting over a very, very old idea. Uh, notice that there is a very trivial elementary way to explain that summation if you group by distance. So this means that your centrality is the number of your in neighbors plus the number of the nodes at distance two to you divided by two, so weighted one half, plus the number of nodes at distance three from you divided by three, and so on. So it's a very, very reasonable elementary way of establishing that a node is central or important in the network. Okay, what we can do is we, we can try to understand, uh, uh, and that I'm switching to another paper, how the different behavior of centralities like page rank, the dominant eigenvector, hits uh, other indices between us by trying to understand some of the behavior, local behavior of these uh, indices. And what I'm proposing to you as an example is to have a couple of interesting axioms. So suppose we have these two loops and a bidirectional bridge in the middle. In the mid in the middle. Any any ranking that is independent, isomorphism independent, so it does not depend on the name of the nodes, must give exactly the same score to the two nodes, because they are symmetrical. So what I'll do, I'll put a click here. And now, I want the red node to become more important. So if this happens, I will say that the ranking is sensitive to density, because I'm densifying in the strongest possible way the left side, and I'm leaving the right side unchanged. So the red node should feel the increase of density around him more than the other one, okay? For any k. So this means that you want to do this for, with page rank, you must compute the algebraic form. You cannot do a computation in the limit. You must write down the formula, and then you have to prove that some polynomial have certain, uh, satisfy an, an inequation. That's the first time in my life I used the solution of the quartic equation, by the way. It never happened before to me. Second idea, sensitivity to size. Okay, sensitivity to size, we want to sometimes, somehow schematize the fact that a ranking is sensitive to the, amount, the number of nodes that can reach you, in spite of density. So we'll do the following. We take the densest and the less dense, the sparsest graph possible, strongly connected, vertex transitive, to make the computation easy. And now the request is as follows. So you compute your ranking on the network. This is one network made by two pieces. Okay, so you compute your, net, your ranking. And my request is when, with either, when either k or p goes to infinity and the other one is fixed, at some point, the ranking of the part of the network will become larger. So fix k 1,000, you let go p to infinity, at some point, the nodes of the loop become more important than the node of the click in your uh, ranking. What this tries to formalize is that even if the loop is very, very, very sparse, if you make it very, very, very big, Against something that is very dense but small, it will become more important. 
Now you can ask yourself, is this true of anything? And uh, so we have uh, worked this for a number of uh, uh, rankings, like degree, okay, easy, betweenness, the dominant eigenvector, Silly's index, which is page rank without uh, uh, the damping factor, which you might know or not, it was invented in 51 by a psychologist named Silly. Uh, Katz's index, page rank, hits, salsa, closeness and, closeness, and harmonic centrality. So any guess? What will be sensitive to, okay, no, don't guess. I don't have the time to let you guess. So density. Density is easy, and actually only between us as clo and closeness are not sensitive to density. Uh, all spectral stuff works nicely and is sensitive to density and harmonic too, which is nice because it appears to, cor to correct some other flow uh, uh, of, uh, flow of uh, uh, closeness besides the lack of strong connectivity. What's more interesting is that basically nothing is sensitive to size, not at least in both, number, in both sides, only harmonic ends up being. And uh, for the spectral stuff, there is a very clear divide. So anything that is normalized by rows, I mean, that is stochastic size, is completely insensitive to size. Anything that is uh, not normalized is sensitive on the K side, on the easy side, on the click side, but it's not sensitive on the loop side. So this for us is a nice confirmation that uh, the idea is good because we believe that these two uh, properties, to be sensitive density and size, are actually, uh, actually express something interesting that uh, a ranking should do. Okay, but let's try something else, completely different. So, now we go into information retrieval. So uh, what do you do in information retrieval? You have, uh, if you want to do something replicable, you have collections, okay, like GOV2, which is a collection uh, gathered by NIST for the T-REC conference. You have 25 million documents. You have 150 queries, okay? And some humans very patiently annotated documents and you know which are relevant for the query. Of course, nobody looked at 25 million documents. Okay, what happens is that there is an annual competition. Many people from different areas try to find the best documents. They take the 100 best documents from every team, and they judge those documents. And so this is then used for years in the research community to try to have replicable results in information retrieval. So what we will do, we will run the query from T-REC in conjunctive form, we will get uh, 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 the relevant pages, and we will generate the induced subgraph. And then we will just rank with all the centralities you have. So you, you're looking for something, okay? You take all the pages that contain something, you build an induced subgraph, you rank it. You're not using the text, so the number we'll get are very, very bad. We know that this is the case, but this gives some idea of which kind of centrality is capturing inside the induced subgraph of relevant pages, which one are the most important pages, okay? And, um, okay, at this point you evaluate how good is your result. The simplest way to do is precision at 10, you take the first 10 results and you measure the fraction of the results that are correct. And you average among, among all query. I'm also showing a more complicated measure, normalized discounted cumulative gain, if you've heard of it, okay, otherwise stick with precision at 10, but okay, this is what you get. So margins are very small. This is known. I mean, there, are pre there have been previous paper with the same approach without geometric centralities, just hits, page rank, and so on. And above the harmonic line, we basically reproduce exactly the same order of uh, magnitude of result and the same order between the various kinds of rankings. So we're quite confident we didn't make any mistake. But by a small margin, we can improve uh, with harmonic. So, we see that there is some interesting signal even in, uh, in this case, which is, has nothing to do with the action. Okay, let's try something else. Uh, anybody, everybody know what Kendall Stau is, I guess. No, me, okay. Kendall Stau is a statistical correlation index that tries to understand how much two scores are uh, similar, not by value, but by ranking, okay? so. It's the rank-based analogous of Spearman's, Spearman's row. So essentially, you have two vectors, R and S, okay? You look at two indices, IJ, IJ. You look at the value, like 3, 5, 7, 8, a concordance, because 3 is less than 5 and 7 less than 8. You look at the other two values, 3, 5, 8, 0. Oh, no, this is a discordance, because 3 is smaller than 5, but 8 is larger than 0, okay? Kendall's tau in the... Simple case, say, without any ties, so the scores are all distinct, is simply the number of concordances 
minus the number of discordances divided by n binomial 2. So what happens? The, the index goes from minus 1 to 1. 1 means that everything is a concordance, so the scores might be different, but the order induced by the score is exactly the same. Okay? Minus 1 means that all pairs are discordant. Okay? So every pair is reversed, and the order induced is exactly the opposite. So this is the uh, uh, statistical uh, uh, um, the correlation that is used most in the web search uh, uh, when you have to correlate different rankings on the same set of items, let's say on a graph. Now, I'm just going to go a little bit farther. So this is the 38 definition that most people use. But Kendall went a little bit further on this line because he said there might be ties. Okay? There may be ties. So item i and item j might have exactly the same score. And essentially, upon a suggestion of Daniels in another paper, he comes up with the idea that uh, uh, this summation is a little bit like an internal product. It's not an internal product. And uh, then you can essentially use it to build a norm. Uh, and then you can define, again, a correlation index, which is actually the cosine similarity between two vectors associated to the score vectors. Oh, sorry. So imagine that you turn R, is a vector of scores, say, on the nodes of the graph, in a larger vector whose uh, elements are indexed by pairs ij. And the value in ij is a signum of ri minus rj. So now, what you do is do cosine similarity. You do exactly the scalar product divided by the norms. And this gets exactly back, if you do the math, to the previous case if there are no ties, but gives you a notion of correlation even when there are ties, which is sensible. Like, if you have half zeros, half one, Half one, half zeros, you get minus one. So even if there are ties, you get perfect inverse, corre sorry, inverse correlation, which is okay because you exactly flipped the two halves. So what, uh, why I'm talking to you about that? Because there has been research in the past that claimed, for instance, that page rank is very different from the in degree. And this is true if you compute candle tau. But the problem is that on a large network, we care about a minuscule fraction of the nodes. And those nodes have very high degree usually. And on those nodes, all rankings tend to correlate. So what I'm suggesting to do, uh, which is something that has been done in part in other papers, but never exactly in this form, and I, it's actually a very simple idea, is we slightly modified this internal product by weighting. So now, essentially, instead of counting one a discordance, a, 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 or minus one, a disco, uh, sorry, one, one a concordance, minus one a discordance, we will weight it. And we will weight it smartly. So basically, imagine one over i plus one over j. What does it mean? We have a new correlation index. Everything goes through exactly in the same way. But the correlation index has a very high cost if you exchange important elements, and a very low cost if you exchange not so important elements. The nice thing is that you can compute it in O n log n, like candle style. So you can apply it to any network. You can do it in MapReduce, in Spark, in whatever you want. You can compute this weighted index on any network. Close parenthesis. Sorry, I know this is really skimming, but imagine that you have this uh, uh, new candle tau. Let's call it hyperbolic candle tau because the weighting is hyperbolic. And now we look at another data set. Common crawl 2012 hosts. OK, common crawl 2012 is the largest web graph available. It's 3.5 billion pages, and it, I think about 200 billion edges, something like that. You can download it from free from Amazon Web Services in the form, in web graph format, which is the format we developed to compress graphs. It has been put together by the University of Mannheim, okay? And uh, we published a paper the last dub, 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 that analyzes the graph, in case you're interested. But you can download it. It's all open data, I mean, for free. What we did was to take the hosts and build a host graph. So you take the web hosts and you connect them with an edge if any page from host A connects host B. And then you have a graph. And then you run centralities. OK, this is a, a roundup of the first 20 entries by a number of centralities on that graph. And anything that is bold is unique where it appears. OK, so anything that is bold is unique in the position in which it appears. So first of all, <clears throat> you can notice that, yes, closeness sucks. We knew that. I mean, the graph is highly disconnected. Closeness must suck. 
Uh, then you can see that in the grain cats basically have no unique entries, also because in the grain cats are so correlated that basically they are the same. And then you can see that actually page rank is somehow diverging from the rest and there's a few unique items. And the same happens for harmonic. And then I won't go into the details, but you can judge by yourself whether TW, Yahoo.com, BlogFC2.com, TStory.com, Parallels.com, or Yahoo, New York Times, BBC, WC, MySpace are a best choice uh, uh, for site to bring up uh, uh, in the classification. Now, of course, we're just looking at the very top, the 20 element of 100 million sites. So let's get an insight downstairs. And to do that, I'll show you a correlation table. So this is the hyperbolic tau. So it's a correlation on the indices. And dependent on the value, depends only on the order in which the ranking ranks the node. And I'm coloring towards black, high correlation, towards zero, uncorrelation. OK, what can we see? First of all, if you look at it properly, the spectral stuff is very correlated to degree, which is something you clearly see when you look into data. Okay? But it, if you do the standard kernel tau, you get much lower values because in the nodes of degree one or two, there is a lot of noise, a lot of exchanges of discordances, which are completely relevant because you will never get those in a query. But this tells you, for instance, it's very clear that this is more correlated to degree than that. But the, what's important for me is this is 0 0.72. So you might think that harmonic centrality is useless, which is OK. But the signal it gives is very different from the spectral signal, okay? because this correlation is very low. Remember that we're talking about sensible centrality. So whatever you do, you're working in the correlation range 0, 0.75, 1. Okay? Unless you do something completely crazy, like assi randomly assigning weight, any sensible centrality will more or less pick some common subset of nodes. So, uh, it's perfectly okay that we get very high correlations. Uh, closings, of course, sucks, but I'm, I'm going to talk about this weird value that it was, I happen to find by serendipity in a, in a moment. So the message is here is, if you look anecdotally into data, uh, geometric centralities do a great job. Okay. Uh, if you look analytically into data, certainly they have a different signal. So. The purpose of the talk is to convince you that uh, page rank is a good baseline, but you should try also something else. Because there is out there something else that is an interesting baseline uh, that is completely independent of spectral considerations. Now, this is very weird, and it's very interesting. When I saw it, I thought it was a mistake, of course, because this is a very high correlation between a totally broken ranking and page rank. Okay, why is that? Well, there is an easy explanation that I will try to give uh, uh, looking at this picture. So, Page rank is not sensitive to size. So this means that if you take isolated component, it will give them a very high weight compared to anything that is sensitive to size. Because it feels a very local, uh, 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 what happens in a very local neighborhood. So what I did was to take Hollywood. I took anything that is not in the giant component. And I sorted the rank of the nodes by, clo by closeness. So on the top row, you can see the rank by closeness is very high. Anything that is in a small isolated component it's very, it's very high closeness rank because closeness is broken. Okay? You can see sensible rankings here going up, and you can see page rank here. So it's not entirely crazy as closeness, but it's quite close to craziness. You won't see it looking at the data because this pulls up crap in the first 10 results. This will pull up, pull up crap to the 1,000th result. So you won't see it, but you see it if you use a proper correlation index. Not, not being sensible to size as a price. OK, why are we taking up this now? Well, uh, simply it was impossible to compute this stuff on large networks before. Uh, you can do it not very quickly using Hyperbole, which is a diffusion-based algorithm that basically estimates sketches of the size of ball radius t around nodes. And you can compute on a, a reasonable workstation uh, geometric centrality is for billions of nodes very easily. It's not more expensive than computing, say, uh, page rank. And actually, this is the algorithm we use to measure the degree of separation of Facebook, because when you can compute both, you can actually compute the, degree, uh, the distribution of distances from which you get the average distance in a graph. OK, so the message is the next time you need a centrality index, try harmonic. Uh, well, maybe not wholly harmonic, but you should try harmonic centrality, because we think it's a great idea for a number of different reasons. You can compute it quickly. And certainly, it gives a very different signal. 
Uh, here you can find software Java, Java software that will compute uh, uh, geometric centrality easily out of the box. Here you can find data sets. And if you want to play, I suggest you this site. So this was done in collaboration with the University of Mannheim. And uh, let's see if I can show you. So this is simply a... Uh, uh, I knew that would have worked. I was sh so sure it wouldn't have worked. Okay, so basically this is a website where you can explore, not the first, the top, uh, oh, it's a little bit, uh, not the first stand, but any element of the ranking of the host that I showed you. So you can see uh, uh, different rankings by different uh, uh, type of, Okay, centrality, so like page rank, cats in degree harmonic. You can browse uh, to any level. You can look for your own site if you want. But what's more important, you can compare ranks. Like you can go by in degree, okay, and then say, oh, what happens to something that is top by in degree? Well, it's top by cats. It's not so top by page rank. And if you go just a little bit down, you start to find a lot of spam, which cats pushes a little bit down, page rank, 1,000, harmonic centrality 30 million. So, yes, yeah, the signal is very different. And I invite you to explore the difference in ranking between systems with this website because it's a lot of fun. And that's it. <laughs>